All right, coming back to work on our logos. I'm just on the assignments page of the course, and there are some extra resources here. So we have not just a link to our proving ground, which we're all finished with, but also to where we post our final logos. But then there's also, just to remind you, links on the slides about the basics about logo creation and design. And especially for this, the freeware class, there is a mentorship presentation that's all about creating a logo with vector.com, the freeware we're using. And the, the digital honors student that created this mentorship presentation, they, they have a slightly different method than I do, right? Or than I might be demonstrating. So lots of uh, built-in shapes that were composited together, then saved as a PNG, brought into PhotoP and then saved as a PNG, things we're going to be doing in order to add other effects. So this is what we're trying to do, just a, a clean black shape logo for today. So how far have we gotten? We have our refined sketch, right? And then last class, we opened vector.com. And as you, you log in, I'm just logging in with my Google account. It will save your progress because it will no longer allow you to save on a free account uh, as of the type of file that opens up this way. So you just have to rely on its, its memory. But we also did save it as an SVG. So if we needed to, if you just double click on that SVG on your computers, because we do have Illustrator on the class computers, it will open up as an Illustrator file, which gives us all the same control of the individual vector shapes. That's why we save as an as a SVG out of vector.com just for safety, right? I have my tablet. I have my uh, my layers here. I've created three paths so far. That's one. That's two. I don't know what the third is. Must be an empty one. So if I want to delete a path, I can do that just by hitting delete. So you want to kind of get used to your assets. And then at the base here, I have an image that can be turned on and off. That's my sketch that I've taken down to only 20% opacity. And I've locked it so I can't accidentally mess with that. Though in a vector program, a raster image is not something you can really mess with too much except to resize. As I finish off these paths, and I'm pretty happy with both of these paths, I'm going to lock those as well so I don't accidentally edit those. And then each time I make a new path, whether I'm using the pencil tool, the pen tool, the shape tools, uh, they are going to create a new path for me in layers. Pages don't really matter. Paths matter. AI features is new. We're not using them. So those don't really matter for now. We're trying to learn the basics of vectors here. And then under shapes, this is just really expansive, kind of like it is in PhotoP, all the different vector shapes. And sometimes they can be helpful, sometimes they're not. It just depends on what kind of design you're making. I'm going to be using the, the circle, the ellipse, to cut out that white circle from my head shape. But I have a lot of shapes I still need to trace. And so to do that, I'm going to use the pin tool, Command plus to zoom in, Oops. Command Z to go backwards, right? And then how do we use this tool? You've got to start, you click and start on the pin. And actually, it's designed to be used with the mouse. What's going on? Ah. I was meant to select my layer. Here we go. Okay. So, click on a path. Pin tool, going to create a new path. Here we go. Going to zoom in, Command Plus. Use the space bar to kind of get into it. So, to make a curve, you click and drag 
To make a really subtle curve, sometimes you need to drag pretty far. Because I just want the subtlest curve. And if I need to drag further than my screen, I can hit Command minus, drag it down. There we go. So maybe to there. Then I'm going to hold Command down and move this curve all the way back to reset. And now I'm going to click and drag for my next curve. Hold Command down, move that handle back. So that handle is what's called the leading edge. Each anchor you plot with the pin tool, and the pin tool gives you the most control of how many anchors you have, each anchor has two sides. The line goes into it, the line goes out of it. I like to keep the curve on only one side of it. And that gives me the most control. So I'll always pull out to a curve, unless I'm just doing perfect straights, but then I'll hold command down and move that leading edge curve handle back to the original. And that resets it for me. So I can set the next curve. If I don't do that, then the curve is already limited because it's just a, a reverse of the existing curve, which is good if you want perfectly even curves, but it doesn't match my sketch, right? So what do I do? I hold down command and then I take down the handle on that leading curve. Thanks, Amaya. All right, so we're working on our logos today. The agenda's up on the board. And then we're going to also check in with our group presentations. Whoops. So what happens if I've started a path, but I haven't closed it off? Well, if I double click it, and then I click on the pen tool, so let's click on the path again. Ah, don't want to start a new one. It's annoying. I can also select it here. I should be able to continue it. Ah, but that can be tricky because I don't want to have a lot of empty paths. Why? Because when I fill them, they're going to fill in in weird ways, just connecting the end to the end. So what I can do is I can go to the help section and I can go to the, the FAQ user guides, right, which they moved to Reddit. I can say read more and I can look at these pages on drawing paths. But these are really basic. So they might not tell me how to add to a, an existing path. And I know there's a way. And I have to relearn it each time I'm using vector. So I'm just going to pick up where I left off. Hold down command. And before I go too much further, I might decide to just close the loop. And the problem is it didn't close because these are two separate <coughs> entities, right? So how can you avoid this kind of thing going on? You just need to be really kind of disciplined with your mouse and the pen tool that you close each path you start. So these complex shapes, you can start as simpler shapes. So instead of trying to get every curve just right, just work on getting kind of the basic shapes. Use command, pull that leading edge handle down. Use command, pull that leading edge handle down. Use command, pull that leading edge handle down. Use command, you get the idea. 
And here I might actually use a straight right into the mouth. And then maybe a straight there. Pull that leading handle down. Zoom in. Command Z if you make a path you don't want. Use command, pull that leading curve down. Just on and on. Just keeps going. Because remember, as long as you get the anchor points plotted, then they can be modified. So I'm going to split this tongue with straights. Just curve for the tip. Use command, bring it down. And it's easy to just kind of mindlessly follow your sketch, but what you really want to be doing is improving your sketch. You know, using the cleanliness, the, uh, the precise lines that vectors give you. Even though I'm going for more kind of a funky hand-drawn finish here. I still want to... I can still use it to improve upon my sketch somewhat. So basically, for me to draw any complex shape, and I'm being a little too fussy here, but I always will pull that leading edge of the curve back to the anchor point so that it's a curve on one side and a straight on the other because that gives me the most control for setting and resetting my curves. Another way you can do it is just not plotting curves at all and then just modifying it after. And then I'm going to close it up. Now remember, once you've closed your path, it will give you kind of a transform box around it. And then you're able to fill it if you want, right? And turn off its border. But the most important thing, I've drawn that shape. Now I can modify it just by double clicking on it. And if I want to add anchor points, I simply use the pin tool and I can click them and add them on. What happened? <laughs> so I command Z, get onto the path, double click on it to see my anchor points, and now I can modify them. So ways I can modify them, I can click on them and I can adjust the curves. And if I don't hold down anything when I do that, it will do an even curve on both sides. But if I hold down command, I can adjust them independently. Kind of, I'm holding down command to move this handle independent of the other. If I don't hold down command, they both will match each other to even out that curve. So I get it on one side and then hold down command and then set it on this side. And then I can also just move the anchor point right, to a different position. Once it's set, yeah, you can always modify them once they're set. This isn't even with the pin tool. This is just with no tool in particular. <laughs> because all that matters in vectors are the anchors and then the paths that connect them. So I click on the anchor point in order to modify it. And I can hold down command 
to modify the curves independently on each.